Hello and welcome to another edition of Nation Building. On our program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of the Bahamas. On our program today, we have, as promised, a very, very exciting show. And today we have the privilege of being with the, one of the ministers in the Minis administration. And I'll introduce him to you once we get back from this break. I've been a customer for the past two years, and I will say the quality of the service is very good. During my trip to Andres, I was connected the entire trip, so that was really good. I was able to contact my family members and let them know how the trip was going. We touch land, we're here, so it was very, it was very good, and I really appreciate that. And also during times like when we had the storm, it was really good to have that service to reach out to our loved ones to make sure everyone is okay. And I really appreciate a lot for that. And even when there's a little technical difficulty, they always send out a little text message to let us know if exactly what's going on. I'm happy to be alive and I believe in best. you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and I have the privilege, as mentioned earlier, of having a Minister of Government with us today and in the person of the Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture, Mr. Michael Pintard. Mr. Pintard, welcome to Nation Building. It's good to be here. Yes, and I'm always minded these days that uh, um, serving in a government in a capacity as minister is a very few people on a very busy schedule, and so it's a privilege to, for you to take time out of your schedule to be with us. As I said to a minister colleague of yours on when we did the last show uh, last week, um, that uh, we'd certainly want to see more of your colleagues come to show up because I do get a lot of feedback from our viewers that we have a lot of opposition people on, and so it's a, <laughs> it's a good thing to have some balance, but it's not for a lack of effort. Uh, for us, but we're, we're, we're nonetheless very happy for you to be here. Minister, we have a lot to get through today, and I'm going to dive right into it, but I think it would be a disservice to the country to um, not, at the very least, uh, raise one uh, topic uh, concerning you, I believe, and some have it to say that you are certainly one of the more, if not the most, maybe not the most, but one of the more popular ministers in the uh, Minis administration. Uh, I guess maybe that is because you serve in an area that's not so dicey or maybe you're doing just a great job, but I'll leave that for the viewers to decide. I'm simply asking you, sir, um, to just to, um, for the purpose of the country, recall, uh, take a minute or two and recall uh, your journey in summary as to how you got to be Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture and um, the journey that led there. I, mean, I would only say that I offered in the general election and uh, through the hard work of the Marco City team in particular, and of course the uh, campaign of the Free National Movement nationally, um, and ultimately the grace of God, um, that I came through the valley and the shadow of debt, and I'm still standing. Uh, in terms of Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, that's uh, exclusively in the purview of the Prime Minister who makes a determination of who would serve in his cabinet. And, um, and I'm honored to have been given uh, that opportunity. Wonderful. And um, for those who know you, 
Uh, unlike when I spoke to Minister Wells and said, you know, feed, and I, I share feedbacks that I get, but that I find appropriate from the public whenever we do the show, I said to him, there are many people that talked to me that said that they expected you, based on personality, to be elsewhere. And were you disappointed? And he said, you know, certainly not. The Prime Minister gave him an opportunity and he serves. In your case, though, the commentary I got in preparation is people, a lot of people expected you to be in Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. Seems to have been a natural fit. Do you agree? Um, again, wherever I would have been placed, I, I would have been honored. And, um, and I think there would have been some kind of connection. Um, AG, AG office may have been the exception. I, I, would, <laughs> I would have had to recommend my, my wife. Um, uh, the reality is we ran to uh, represent constituencies. And so my position was simple. I ran to become the member of parliament for Marco City because I'm confident that um, I would work as a partner with the community and uh, not as their uh, a savior, but as a partner. And we would do some transformative things over the course of the five years. Uh, I did not run to become a cabinet minister. So I didn't run with that expectation. So in terms of, of looking forward and projecting where I might end up, uh, as you know, there were far too many battles to fight to be thinking of some appointment I ran to be elected. So that as I serve, I really serve uh, on the terms set for me by the people, not by a person who may appoint me. I, I have to take you up on this one thought, and that is you are unique because most um, people I've known that have had the privilege of serve, serving in these high office, and I've known quite a lot, um, actually had desires, strong desires, of serving at the ministerial level. And quite often, many would frankly say that it really wasn't a primary interest. And so it's interesting that you have a heart to serve your community, and that's where your focus, as you articulate it, is. Um, because uh, people, frankly, who enter politics, too many, um, do so not, not to serve communities per se, but for an opportunity to serve at a high level. I'm not criticizing that as being good or bad, but our system seems to suggest to us that you run, as you said, to be a member of parliament. So let's talk about Marco City. Since being elected to office in May of 2017, just over a year ago, uh, to the Marco City constituency by a significant margin, um, what have you been able to accomplish in that short period of time that you could say, hey, you're proud of the fact that one year in you've been able to deliver X for the people of Marco City? We delivered a manifesto uh, to the residents and we said this is our contract with you in terms of what you could expect and judge us on over the course of five years. One component of that was on quality of representation and accessibility. In that regard, we have kept in contact with, the, with, with residents through a variety of means. Um, WhatsApp groups, using print and electronic media, we are very careful to push out consistently information uh, related to the work that we are doing on residents' behalf or in conjunction with residents. Uh, we hold uh, regular town meetings. We have had at least five very significant town meetings addressing key issues affecting residents. So one of the serious issues in, in Marco City is the issue of home ownership and the challenges we met in place where many persons uh, were in the process of losing their home. The Mortgage Corporation is but one of those um, financial institutions that affect home ownership in Marco City. The, uh, and so we have had consultations with them privately on many occasions, but we have also brought officials to meet with residents so that they're able to work with them through the variety of issues that have them at risk in losing their homes. We have uh, added uh, to uh, our inventory persons who could provide myself with advice as I talk to commercial banks on behalf of residents. And so that's a, that's a work in progress. So we're working on that diligently. That is one town meeting. Secondly, we've had uh, town meetings related to financial empowerment. 
And uh, so I coordinated along with colleagues a town meeting that allowed the Venture Capital Fund to come in, persons from uh, Bahamas Development Bank, BAIC, um, in order to address the need for funding in order for persons to launch initiatives that they believe would pay dividends for them and by extension their family and the community. Uh, coupled with that, uh, we have had uh, entrepreneurship competitions where we have workshopped persons in the constituency for the seven weeks, at the end of which they made a pitch based on their business plan, and we awarded $5,000, eight months uh, rent, uh, free rent to them. For commercial uh, space, I, I imagine. That is, that is, that is correct. Um, and we will be assisting the, the winner in terms of travel to see a similar enterprise that he's, in, he's engaged in. And so those are two of several town meetings that we've had. Obviously, hurricane preparedness meetings, and, and those will be repeated in short order, meetings with social services to answer critical questions to meet needs that persons have who are going through a rough period now. Uh, so that's a part of what we've been doing. Uh, we have also, on an ongoing basis, been uh, looking at, at the bread and butter issues every day. Persons are having challenges with respect to, uh, in some cases, uh, meals. And so we have always had a, a vibrant program prior to the election and since the election in trying to meet some of those basic needs where social services have not been able to step in um, or the assistance being given has not been uh, sufficient. sufficient. So as we assist persons in transitioning out of a vulnerable position, which is a snapshot, meaning many persons temporarily are going through a difficult time, but as opportunities are being created, they will transition out of that. But while they're there, there's a need for a number uh, of help in a number of areas. And so we've pointed them in the right direction. In some cases, we've assisted directly in dealing with bread and butter uh, issues. We have assisted a number of students in terms of educational grants, um, and we've long past uh, um, uh, hit our quota. Uh, but nevertheless, we try to assist. Where we are unable to assist directly, uh, we often do referrals, and not just simply pass on names, but we ourselves make calls. We've been very successful in terms of job placement. We have a wonderful data uh, bank of resumes from constituents who we have been able to facilitate employment, uh, whether it's through the government system, but primarily we've had success in the private sector. And so we're encouraging persons, if you're pursuing job opportunities, uh, go to the office or reach out to the team, send in your resume, um, and we'll, we'll be assisting you in pursuing opportunities. Keep a matrix of all companies that you've applied to so that you yourself can systematically follow up. I, I think one of the most significant things that we have done, aside from the entrepreneurship program, is uh, the Culture Fest. We realized leading up to the election that we had a number of incredible performers in, in Marco City, stage performers, uh, musicians. We also had a, a number of chefs and, and cooks and uh, persons who made pastries, et cetera, and artists and artisans. We wanted to create an event that would enable them to sell their wares to whomever would attend. We started the, the Culture Fest um, at, at the Mary Star Playfield. We paid for the entire infrastructure, sound and light paid the performers, um, recommended to the food vendors, sell your tickets in advance so you could guarantee sales. Persons can come, collect, and, and, and move on. And a number of our vendors did exceptionally well. We are going to do three such events this year. Um, and, we, and, and we believe these kinds of culture fests will grow and they will grow exponentially. We intend to bring on additional sponsors that would assist us in enlarging our territory in, in, in that regard. In addition, we have helped numerous contractors and businesses become compliant. In other words, to become incorporated as a company, to register and get your VATIN number so that you're able to do business with government. Um, and those, things have, uh, those uh, efforts have gone a long way because a number of them we were also to, uh, able to assist with a variety of construction and maintenance contracts. Um, uh, we've, we've also if I could interrupt you, have you been able to stay clear of patronage? Uh, we are not interested in, in, in staying uh, clear of patronage entirely. In fact, we believe it is important 
to identify opportunities for persons in, in, in the community and to make the necessary calls to recommend them as suitably qualified persons. In that uh, group of persons we recommend are some folks who historically have been denied opportunities and we are hopeful that they would get opportunities. But we make very little to no distinction between people's political persuasion in making the recommendation. Well, well let me just for the record, yeah. when I say patronage, it has, has been steeped in our tr tradition yes. in the Bahamas where political parties and people like yourselves that get elected to ministerial positions will simply go the, road, the route of uh, ensuring that people who are supportive of them politically get the contracts when the opportunity present. And so I'm well, simply- Well, in, in Marco City, we had, I think, the fifth largest margin of victory in, in the country in what was essentially a marginal seat that has changed hands for the last four elections. In order to win at that margin, it is clear that it was not only traditional FNMs who supported us, but persons who wear other political colors. So it would not be wise um, to look narrowly at a particular color when you're recommending people to opportunity. We are clear. Bahamians of all political stripes voted for a change in Marco City as they did in many other constituencies. So we are going to be reasonable in providing opportunities. There are uh, a few persons, uh, not necessarily in Marco City, but who have historically benefited disproportionately and who have not provided the quality of work that they ought to. Those are persons we, uh, we seek to avoid. We, we seek to avoid at, at all costs. I heard you. The, the, the question, several questions came, came to mind. I, I thought not to interrupt you because you were laying out what, what I asked you for, which is what, a long list of stuff that you've done. And the question I have is, what, what you've been able to lay out is, is, sounds very impressive, and uh, taking your word that these things have been done, how have you been able to keep up financially and also time-wise, because um, you have a ministerial position portfolio, not just having a constituency to run. So have you been able to, because a lot of MPs struggle with the meager salaries that members of parliament no, it's, make. It's very, it's very difficult. Um, we, have, uh, we have utilized the allocation given by the government in terms of the capital uh, grants. Um, and of course, you have to, I mean, you're going to invariably spend some personal uh, funds. And, and so, again, in the first year, you are laying a foundation. You are also looking at how to strike balance in your personal life with family uh, who make a tremendous sacrifice and it takes a toll as it has on, on my family. You're, you're balancing uh, your ministerial portfolio in, and especially since I live in Grand Bahama and work in New Providence as well as other family islands. And then, of course, at the um, um, constituency level, where persons who are accustomed to seeing me 24-7, and they certainly see me less. So notwithstanding the fact that I'm very busy in, in my constituency, and even when I'm here, I'm working on their behalf, it is still a jarring experience for constituents who would have seen you far more regularly. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. We'll be right back after this break. I've been a customer for the past two years and I will say the quality of the service is very good. During my trip to Andres, I was connected the entire trip, so that was really good. I was able to contact my family members and let them know how the trip was going. We touch land, we're here, so it was very, it was very good and I really appreciate that. And also during times like when we had the storm, it was really good to have that service to reach out to our loved ones to make sure everyone is okay. And I really appreciate a lot for that. And even when there's a little technical difficulty, they always send out a little text message to let us know if exactly what's going on. I'm happy to be alive and I believe in best. you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. 
Jamaica Bahamas fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and I'm here today with the Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture, Minister Michael Pintard, who represents the Marco City constituency in Grand Bahama, a place that is in need of significant help uh, in terms of the economy of Grand Bahama. Minister, before we get into some weightier matters, you were laying out a number of things that you've done and we talked about the fact that it is an impressive um, record that you've laid out. And uh, um, it, it is challenging, you've said financially, and also um, challenging on your time. And I think it necessary for the, perp for the benefit of constituents who have significant, who are very demanding, generally speaking, across the country, voters, and also for those who might not be as, um, had laid maybe the kind of financial foundation that you had prior to your entry into elected representational politics. It brings the point, is it really a, a, an issue these days, a representation of an advice from you to not encourage people who do not have a s solid financial means to get involved in politics at the representational level? In fact, laying out all that you have and admitting the fact that it is a tremendous strain on you financially and personally? Uh, no, I think you have to follow your calling. Um, and if, if you believe that God has given you a, a mission to serve and empower people, uh, your resources are secondary. I, I believe um, that there's a, a, to paraphrase, there's a saying that if God gives you a vision, uh, he makes provision. Um, and so having tremendous financial resources is not a prerequisite to represent people that you love and care about. Um, again, some of the initiatives that we work on, we have wonderful persons in the community who, who make a difference in some of those things happening. Um, uh, we, we have businesses that have been extremely helpful during uh, the time we helped folks prior to this election um, with hurricane relief. We ran possibly the most comprehensive hurricane relief program in the country. And that was a result of help from persons like, uh, you know, um, Jessup Johnson, who unfortunately passed recently, or uh, Johnny S uh, Smith, who has then and now does a tremendous job. Um, and these are business people? Business persons in Grand Bahama. So you've been, 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 able, to, you've been able to garner support. Extremely What about helpful. the politics, though, in, in talking about reaching out to get support from business community? Do you find that there is a political line that's drawn between who you can source funding mm. from or not, support not, not from? Not particularly. I, I think particularly since the persons who I work with in Marco City, that an incredible team, uh, they are not tribalistic. I mean, if they, if they are persons who have genuine needs, the colors become irrelevant. And so I think the fact that we ran a, a campaign uh, that focused on helping people in need, it assisted us. So we got help from persons on all political side of the divide in terms of, of contribution. Um, and we were clear, some of them would not have voted uh, for us, but they would have assisted persons who we identified. Um, and, and so, we're happy. So we, we did the Thanksgiving um, luncheon for seniors, back to school consistently. Hundreds of young people helped with supplies for, for back to school. Uh, we've been, some of the tuition that we have assisted, we, we pointed persons to who needed sponsorship for school and uh, other things to business persons who immediately came on board and helped. The cleanup campaign that, that, that we've been engaged in, again, corporate citizen, uh, offered assistance and have been helpful. We engage in a backyard farming program and a lot of the resources that will be made available during the course of the summer will come from some sponsors we have, we have um, inked arrangements with. So, 
So we are grateful to the community for, for having come on board and, and have been helpful. While I'm tempted to dig a little deeper, let's move on to the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. Um, what would you say, Minister, have been the most significant thing that has stood out in your mind that you have accomplished in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture in the last year? Uh, let me begin um, in culture. I mean, I, I see myself really as a cultural artist who happened to have been elected to be a policymaker. Um, and I believe that it's important that when government spends the people's money, that our primary focus is on looking at indigenous cultural forms and enlarging their impact first on us as a people and then by extension having those cultural forms be attractive to the international community who would want to come here and experience uh, our culture, uh, um, participate um, in our heritage and purchase things that we have created out of our creative brilliance. And so in culture, uh, John Canoe is of course a significant part of that. We have increased the, the funding that have gone to John Canoe. The cabinet of the Bahamas approved uh, an allocation of $5 million, uh, which is going towards the creation of multi-purpose John Canoe shacks. Um, we are now at the stage of land acquisition, having done uh, all of the preliminary works requested of John Canoe groups to identify where their signature shack would be, put in a business proposal which is be evaluated. And um, in this year, we will, in Grand Bahama and in New Providence, assist John Canoe groups and private sector in a public-private partnership in constructing four facilities. L let's bring some clarity to that, because that, that, that is critical and very, very important to the, to the country, to the John Canoe community in particular. But our culture is, John Canoe is, if, you, if there's a word for our culture, I mean, it's not limited to that, but John Canoe is that word. The question is, Lay out a little clearer for us and for the viewers what the funding that has been allocated by cabinet, by the government, for these multi-purpose facilities for John Canoe. Is it for specific groups, or are these facilities that all groups will be able to access? The, the government made a commitment to go on a path that would help groups become self-sustaining. One of the ways to do that is to assist in bringing to fruition an old dream that many John Canoes have had, which is to have a space where they are able to sell their paraphernalia or cultural products, a logo store, to have a space where they can create and demonstrate to the public who comes in, whether it's students, Bahamians, uh, from throughout the country, as well as tourists, to watch the creation of, uh, um, of cowbells, of drums, of whistles, of costumes, and you could see it being done. That is a tour in and of itself. Then to have a small performance space where you could see choreograph, dance, or uh, belling, uh, or any other number of forms of performances, as well as to have a drop dance screen so you could have an audio visual show that gives a panoramic view of Bahamian culture in general, John Canoe in, in, in particular. Um, and then, of course, to have meeting, meeting rooms, uh, one of which a group may decide they wish to convert into a studio to record or master, create a master tape of their music, and then have a small cafe to serve uh, visitors as well as the surrounding community. We have done the architectural, um, initial architectural drawings, thanks to Mr. Uh, Leslie Johnson. We've met multiple times with the John Canoe community. Proposals have been submitted. Uh, adjudication is going to take place uh, shortly. And, uh, and then the allocation of funds is going to be towards the acquisition of the land and a portion of the construction. The, the government made it very clear Groups have to have skin in the game, so they must also have sweat, equity, plus resources. And then the corporate community. To the corporate community's credit, uh, five conversations that I have had have resulted in pledges of support, financial support. Do you care by to corporate, say how much? In the vicinity of $750,000 um, towards this initiative. We also um, have a commitment um, 
from the uh, Port Authority to land allocation towards the groups in Grand Bahama in order to create this space, which of course is not just good for the Jaukudu community, it adds to the inventory of cultural offerings that tourists have been crying for in, in Grand Bahama. We have a private citizen donated a half an acre in Exoma. Um, and so that is one of the initiatives so, that we are proud so of. So to be sure, the four um, buildings, uh, one would be constructed in Grand Bahama, I assume? We're expecting two in Grand Bahama, two, two, two in, in, New, in New Providence, and then we will phase in the, the Family Island project uh, How soon well. do you see that? Within, being within the next calendar year, we expect those buildings to be up. To be up, to completed. Be up. That's correct. Wow, Minister, you're moving pretty fast. Well, we are, setting, we are setting an aggressive schedule, barring some catastrophic event. We expect that it's going, and it's going to happen. And funds have been allocated. Have been allocated as a government portion of what will be a tripart relationship between the John Kudu groups and the corporate community. So I, I, I assume then that is coming out of the 2018, 2019 budget, seeing that we're coming That's pretty correct. much to that, the end that of is, That is, that okay. is correct. So, so that is one of the things that we're proud of in, 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 um, in, in culture. Um, the, 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 second, the second thing I want to identify with respect to culture, we are now taking culture and youth outreach to the park. So this straddles culture and youth. We have been in at least five, I believe possibly six communities thus far, where we are, we are holding meetings with the community prior, that is stakeholders from the community, to talk about uh, making sure we identify cultural resources in those communities who would perform when we hold this event. Um, but also who need ongoing support in order for them to flourish. Uh, we also meet with youth leaders to talk about the challenges in those communities, much of which we know in advance from, from the work that has been done by the youth division over, over time. Um, and then we go in and hold the event, Culture in the Park, Youth Outreach, where we put on display youth organizations so that parents could be aware of organizations that can assist them in the further development of their children. And then we have a number of performances, primarily cultural performers from that community, as well as a couple of national performers, because obviously uh, you need a carrot as well, because sometimes people don't fully appreciate the brilliance of the culture in their community. So bringing in a couple of uh, nationally recognized performers is also useful. We work in conjunction with non-governmental agencies as well as the constituency office, irregardless of politics. And so why we have done, uh, just by virtue of the fact that New Providence is dominated by the governing parties, members of parliament, we've done those constituencies, but similarly we've been in Angleston um, and have worked with um, the, the member of parliament there and look forward to doing additional projects with um, um, Glennis Hannah Martin. So that is an initiative. We believe that the, the fight for the imaginations and heart of our young people, that the front line of that fight is in our communities. So to the extent that we ho continue to hold events in hotels, we will reach a segment of the community, but, but we believe the primary fight is in the community. So, we, so these outreach initiatives, we're very proud of that. We'll do two more of those before this in, in Grand Bahama before the budget cycle end, and hope to do one additional in Tall Pines before the, the budget cycle end and we're going to step up our intensity. The third thing is we, we did an outreach effort in Kett Island to identify the cultural sites, um, and we are now working with the member of parliament, the, the uh, uh, leader of the opposition, the uh, island administrator, and residents. Our goal, in conjunction with tourism, who have made a commitment, and local government, is to, is to clear the parts for these historical heritage uh, sites and to put up proper signage which will create economic opportunities for persons in Kid Island when folks visit what is uh, quite possibly the, 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 the bread basket of culture in this country that has the distinction of the Why highest Why do you say the bread basket of culture? Uh, it's, it's the home of rake and scrape which we've increased in our allocation to this year. Um, it, is, it is the home of so many significant historical sites, including the southern part of Kett Island in Port Howe, um, parts of, of, of old by going towards the north side, a treasure trove of plantations 
that are virtually unexplored by Bahamians and the rest of the world. An old train track uh, that was there, Mount Vol Alvernia, the highest point in, in the Bahamas, et cetera, and, Homer, and, Sydney, and, Poitier. And, and many Bahamians yeah. have, over the years, uh, throughout different administration, have been heavily critical, and maybe your voice, is, your voice was one as well, of the fact that we have not exploited the cultural offerings. You go to places right. like Jamaica and elsewhere where uh, these heritage sites are celebrated, their tourists goes there, and I have a number of trips. I mean, even December, a crew of us that went to Jamaica went to visit, it, to visit a number of sites. They're very interesting, and, and one of the things I must say, and in the midst of your statement, it came to mind as you talked about your plans for culture. And I wondered where was the idea born out of this concept of um, this John Canoe creating that display, which really goes through the facet of creation of, of uh, products, as cowbells and other things that create, uh, that's a part of our national art form, to uh, displaying it and showing it off to tourists. Where was that, that, that idea born of creating this, this expose or whatever you want to refer to? It? Again, I think it has been um, a collective um, a baby that's, that's being born in the sense that this is a discussion that we've had for years. Unfortunately, we have not uh, made the decisions in a timely fashion and we will not allow this opportunity to escape. It will be done, and which is why we say, when you want to do a careful evaluation and give us a grade at the end of our second year, one of the things you ought to put on that, did we execute on the creation of a multi-purpose uh, John Canoe shack? Did we get that done? And so you're and you, you, could take, you could take that off. You're telling the Bahamian people, you heard him. Assess. That assess. At, at the end of two years, culture is going to be revolutionized. My words. Yeah, yeah. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. Right back after these messages. I've been a customer for the past two years and I will say the quality of the service is very good. During my trip to Andres, I was connected the entire trip, so that was really good. I was able to contact my family members and let them know how the trip was going. We touch land, we're here, so it was very, it was very good and I really appreciate that. And also during times like when we had the storm, it was really good to have that service to reach out to our loved ones to make sure everyone is okay. And I really appreciate Alive for that. And even when there's a little technical difficulty, they always send out a little text message to let us know if exactly what's going on. I'm happy to be alive and I believe in best. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and today we are uh, talking to Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture, Mr. Michael Pintard, who is laying out a, plat a plateau of tremendous things that uh, you, the public, uh, I have heard crying out for through successive administrations. And he has said, judge him after two years, because he intends to make sure that all the a significant portion of those promises made will be delivered. So we'll sure. hold the minister accountable. <clears throat> and we'll, in fact, I'm asking you for a commitment to come back here next year, this time, so that we can 
talk about and judge what has been done. No problem. In okay. fact, we're prepared to come in, in the second quarter of the year. Okay. Um, well, we had a John Canoe Conclave that we thought was quite significant. One had not been held in, in quite some time. And uh, one of the outcomes of the, of the conclave is an agreement that we will move in the direction to form a John Canoe Commission, a statutory body that will have oversight for various dimensions of John Canoe development in this country. And that has been and talked to, about before. Precisely. So the, the committee, we, in fact, we had a meeting um, this week to further move that process along. The initial persons who will serve on that committee, uh, there will be a meeting with them next week um, in order for them to get uh, moving on, on, that, on, on that work. And, and so uh, the, it is important that you move with haste uh, once a determination is made. The second outcome was that we made a commitment that we will hold a John Canoe Festival this year without fail, where uh, December is the period that we are looking at that blanketing or bookending the two parades really should be um, a variety of events related to John Canoe. And we had a very uh, successful uh, meeting this week which follows on the heel of an earlier meeting uh, dealing with all dimensions of, of, of Junior John Canoe. And we've made a commitment that for those who are interested in the visual arts, there are many John Canoes who are visual artists. There's no reason why we should not have a nationally recognized art exhibition of John Canoe works where persons have the ability to sell and get paid. Um, how, how practical is that, though, in the month of December when everybody is preparing? Which is for one of the, the criticisms that was raised by those who objected to a December festival and thought it should be in the summer. Well, the reality is not. Not all persons who are committed to John Canoe um, are engaged in the parades themselves. <laughs> so you have, and you have John Canoes who also have the ability to multitask, to create art pieces, because a number of them wish to generate income in the area of their gifting and their passion. So if they have an art exhibition going on while they are uh, um, in the shacks? while they while they on, on Bay Street, that's a wonderful thing. So people can go to uh, let's say hypothetically a central a central bank or other options which are now being discussed with the National Art Gallery. Um, that would be a wonderful thing. So you have an art exhibition. What prevents literary artists, inclusive of stage performers and others, to uh, put on an event, whether it's a, a, a a, a night showcasing poetry, storytelling, uh, theater that's, that, that is motivated by or inspired by John Canoe themes or addressing life in the shack, et cetera, a hilarious piece looking at life in the shack, et cetera. So there's nothing that prevents that. So you have another group of Bahamians who love the cultural form, but who's putting on something. What prevents various competitions from being held during that period? Or the designers of costumes, what prevents them from uh, designing costumes, begin advertising those this summer for persons who wish to participate in the parade as a part of the fun groups? L lest I get fired by those who uh, tune in and cause the sponsor to sponsor our program, I have to move away from culture. I know it's your passion, but I've got a number of concerns, questions that I, many of which have been fueled to me by, by um, people. Recently, uh, the, the, your administration uh, uh, successfully, I might add, held the Carifta Games held here in the capital. And um, pretty much a general sentiment has been that the, without I guess a glitch with the medal issues of shortage of medals, the game was almost flawless in terms of the presentation and so much. I have so many compliments around the game. First question is, was the, the um, securing the games, was that a fruit of your work or was it the previous administration that secured? No, the, the, the previous administration, um, again, the bid for those games would have, would, would have preceded us coming to office. In, in that regard, I'd like to um, certainly congratulate my predecessor, the um, Honorable uh, Daniel Johnson, who during uh, his administration put on a number of international events, inclusive of the IAAF World Relays, the uh, FIFA uh, Beach Soccer competition, of course, um, 
the Commonwealth Youth Games, which we hosted, the bid for that occurred um, under, the, under the previous administration. And some would um, say so, he handed you a gift because Carifta was a, a, a certainly a thug um, in it. Well, the, the, re the reality is there, there are gifts that come with obligations and burdens that we must bear. Um, and so it, governments are continuous. And so if I need advice, I'll call former ministers regardless of their political colors. And, Danny and you are mature like that. Danny is certainly one of them. That so, is not common in our government either, I'm um, told. Um, I, I think this 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 um, batch of ministers, I see a number of them, uh, actually have very little um, preoccupation with what will happen in five years, and are quite preoccupied trying to figure out how to solve some tough issues, even if it costs them. So I think a number of them would do the same thing. And so, um, again, the difference, however, has been that while we believe the brand of the Bahamas has been enlarged by having more eyeballs on the Bahamas during those, these big events, a couple of uh, things must happen that are fundamentally different than what has happened in the past. One, federations ought not to be encouraged or supported in bidding for games that they are unclear on how it's going to be paid for, that there should be a candid discussion with the government as to whether or not uh, this bid ought to take place. So the government is not saddled with the expense of a game that the Federation has, has, has um, made an offering for. So that's, but but, but that's, one would have assumed that that was the way it would have worked. That, that, that is not the way it always works. Um, uh, but, but more significantly, um, the public is concerned about return on investment. And so we have to be very careful whenever we make a determination to host an event that we're clear on how the eyeballs that are ch uh, channeled on the Bahamas during that event, how is that going to translate into economic growth benefit. and development and benefit for, for, for the country? And so uh, our goal is to make sure that the costs for hosting these games are from the start shared between government and private sector. Um, and so that it's not just the government's purse that's paying Which is for, actually for, the for these purse. games. That's correct. Yeah, um, we, we, we ought to make sure that it's a shared responsibility. Thirdly, federations want to make sure that when there are international competitions, the, the, the sport that they represent is also developing. There, is some, there are some benefits that, that flow in an intentional way out of that event being staged in this jurisdiction and the to, the feder to the federation and development of our, of our, of our athletes. And so, so, the, so we are pivoting in terms of how that works. We are also, I should say, which has been a source of, of contention for some, the government does not believe it is our role to be paying the local organizing committee uh, a tremendous amount of resources in the absence of corporate citizens uh, putting money into that event. We have no difficulties of in terms of professionals being appropriately compensated for organizing these events. But the pot out of which they are paid ought to be both private and, pu and, and public. And some would certainly say, what do, is the incentive for corporate Bahamas to, um, to, to do that? You can understand when events are being sponsored, so there's publicity. Precisely. But, but what is the uh, benefit for corporate Bahamas to just pile in monies into the, I, the, 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 the um, BTAs or whatever? Um, federation. Well, well because to, uh, oftentimes members from these organizations and professionals from other sectors of the country, they form the LOC that organize these world-class events and, and local events. And um, there's a value for that service being, being, being offered. And the brand of that company is associated with, the, with these events. Let, let, let's move on quickly and see how much we can dive into. Let's talk about the performances of our athletes. You, talk, you alluded to that earlier. Since the first Crafter Games held in, in 1972, Jamaica has dominated the games, winning all but five of the games. I think the Bahamas won in 81 and 82 and 83 and 84, and I think Bermuda won once. But outside of that, and, and many people are saying, Minister, even while the games, I myself attended the games, why is, this that, why is it that we have not been able to to win more games, why is it that we haven't been able to improve uh, from our lot of the 1980s when we were able to, to, to beat Jamaica um, at the game? We seem to have been relegated to second place, and that has been the history. What is it that is, what is it, 
that we're lacking as a country and what is it going to take for us to get to the, that, 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 that next level? That's a, it's an incredible question that I think deserves a show in and of itself, right? Um, and I'd love to participate in that with some of the representatives from the Bahamas Olympic Committee as well as representatives from the, from the Federation. So forgive me as I answer your, your question um, this way. Uh, this uh, past year, we have held uh, a sports federation conclave. Um, all conclaves, all of the, sorry, the federations were invited to come in so we could talk about the development of their junior athletes, of uh, their senior athletes, what we ought to do with respect to elite athletes, and in that regard, the subvention program, proper governance structure of the federations, uh, so that they become self-sustaining, increasingly self-sustaining, and can go ahead and, and, and raise the necessary capital to do a number of the things that if you're gonna produce competitive athletes, you have to do. So for example, the Bahamas would be far more uh, effective in, in, in this case you cited track and field if one we have uh, more facilities in uh, um, throughout the Bahamas and that the ones that exist in Grand Bahama in, in New Providence are more accessible to our athletes but we ought to have uh, gyms that are available that people can actually train and access with a qualified person in, in the gym to provide instruction and guidance. We ought to have access to nutritionists, physiotherapists, massage therapists, people need ice baths, etc. And you, and you, and you um, are addressing a lot and, of my questions. And, so and, and you ought to have elite coaches, some of whom are, are home, but, in, in, but the numbers are insufficient. So we must not be xenophobic about bringing uh, persons Elite who may be in. even of other ethnicities to the Bahamas to coach, and, and I'll say this final thing and pause, um, as well as coaches who are born in the Bahamas but are training athletes from other countries who are <laughs> defeating us, to bring them home and not permit their compensation package to cause discontent so, among those so who are here. straight to the point, Minister, what is the government of the Bahamas and you as Minister prepared to do to solve all of these issues, because well, you have hit again, the nail on the head again, about the problem. I think a part of it, a part of it, is why we did the the, the the conclave for the federations. We believe that federations have to play a more active, deliberate role in the development of the sport, and that the government, as a facilitator, provides them with the institutional support, uh, funding, a system in acquiring the technical expertise required. So we're prepared to put resources and to use uh, the the strength of government to help empower federations, their association, and clubs. So that means partnering with them to get elite coaches. Water polo succeed in, in large measure because the Aquatics Federation and others partnered in making sure that they had world-class coaching that is now catapulting the, the water polo team. Uh, when, we, when we have international meets like the World Championship, it's not uncommon that we would go to a Sydney Cartwright, bring him home, make sure that he workshops so, the athlete, et cetera, So et cetera. is it fair to say, Minister, that Bahamians is not lacking in ability to do any of these disciplines? Precisely. You're highlighting the fact that we need professional coaches need and it takes money to pay these people because they're question. not going to leave offer, offers in the U.S. and other countries to come here to do it. Um, some also say diet plays a significant role, and there's and a lot of discipline, yeah, right? Yeah. In discipline with, with our people, and I guess coaching fixes solves yeah. a lot of that problem. Yes. Because again, a number of our citizens complain that, notwithstanding Jamaica is much bigger in, popul in a population than we are, but if you were to complain and say, "Well, Jamaica is ten times bigger," well, the U.S. is a hundred times bigger than Jamaica. How come they're beating them in 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 sprint? And so. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I seem to hear you say you agree that we, it's a not, not a lack of ability, it's really a matter of getting the necessary tools we need to develop our... With, with, without tools as well as facilities. Facilities are very... And all of this require money. Oh, with, without question. In the first year, in the first year, for example, we knew that there were a number of capital development works that we were unable to carry out. Um, however, those several of those items are on the docket to be addressed in our second year and um, and beyond. So, so for example, a number of the family island facilities were paused before we came to government. So it isn't as if government's election 
discontinued construction. They were paused. Um, we intend with. Uh, Are you doing any stop reviewing and canceling? Oh, or? No, no, no. Of, 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 of course, every one of these projects, whether it's the Exuma where, uh, project, which had designs that were being worked on, uh, but no construction, Abaco that had designs that were completed, but the project did not get sufficient allocation, it never got started. The Moors Island that got to the level, preparatory work, a compaction of fill, but not beyond that, pause before the election, the baseball stadium, et cetera. I was getting to that. All of these are items that are on the radar of this administration. So just to wrap that up, in terms of those family island facilities, we're going to look at not only at government allocation, but public-private partnerships to move those projects along. In the case of the baseball stadium, we did in fact take a paper to cabinet in order to pay some of the outstanding bills. It was approved, and a number of those bills which we met in place, uh, we are, we're paying for. We are now at the stage where we have done a business plan for the baseball stadium, looking at a minimum of two, but quite possibly uh, we'll offer a third option, but two primary options. One is to complete the baseball stadium in its present location, which would include putting in the IT infrastructure and two fields surrounding it. But there are a number of challenges with that particular space, which was not the original space. The original space was west of, of uh, Government High. And, um, and, and so we are, we are looking at that as one, as one option. Uh, the second option is to retrofit, or repurpose is a better word, the existing uh, baseball stadium that's under construction in, 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 to become a multi-purpose facility. But in, in doing that, what would happen with the funds invested but, in, in the present site? Well, this is what I'm saying. As you, when you repurpose it, what you simply are doing is you're continuing on that footprint, but you're repurposing it to serve another purpose, which may be multiple sports. And then you build a, a, a smaller stadium on the original on the original site with surrounding fields and use some of the funds you would have allocated to that to build fields elsewhere. I would absolutely get crucified and even time has flatly run out. I have to put this in. I'd be crucified by some of our Facebook people who ask a lot of questions. And so sure. one of the major questions and concern of your ministry that we never got to touch is why is the government of the Bahamas and the ministry that you lead allowing carnival to continue for those who got excited in the church community and other places that had an opposition to Carnival, and it seemed as if the minis administration, if it, the, the party, the FNM under the, went while you were in opposition, if you got to government that you would absolutely not support Carnival. What's it, the um, situation? Those persons that? who represented that the government, while in opposition, intended to cancel Carnival uh, being completely disingenuous. It was never a position offered. What was said by myself, who I was the chief spokesperson at the time as chairman, that we felt as if allocating 30 plus million dollars to a, a cultural form that is foreign was completely inappropriate and that this government would not support Carnival in, in that way. We didn't get into the discussion of banning. We felt Carnival, like any other cultural form, R&B, um, country, could apply for a subvention. And even a subvention in this year was not contemplated. So we provided no funding. So the government no provided no funding pro for Carnival The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture provided no funding uh, uh, for Carnival. And what is interesting, and this is just a footnote, the, the entrepreneurs, um, the bands, managed to put on as large or larger, I have heard, um, road march than in previous years without the benefit of 30 million, without, if you want to break it down, 10 million per year, just as a, and this is not saying that's exactly how it evolved, but I'm just giving an example. Out of, we know at least 25 to 30 billion dollars minimum has been spent. Without that allocation, the, the concert and the road march was bigger. So it begs the question, and, and, and that's for uh, the auditors to, to sort out. Um, so, so again, in terms of the behavior, the route was changed to make sure it was not going through uh, residential communities. So if children end up watching it, uh, parents had to drive them there or walk them there to, 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 to watch it. My, my editors are going to kill me, but there's one other issue, if you could take 30 seconds to address for me. Grand Bahama is in a extremely challenged state and your administration has promised much and many say 
has delivered nothing significant to date. Well, I, I have not heard that particular criticism saying nothing has been delivered. I think persons would nothing want the Nothing significant be, has been delivered. Well, that's today. that's not quite the case. The hotel is the hotel. It's not uh, open yet. Uh, it's no, it's not open yet. But the hotel. It in fact, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. The hotel is in fact open, and in the absence of the government intervention, the hotel would now be closed. No, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm that's talking that's about one. our Lucaya. And two, yes, I'm, I'm talking about the Grand Lucayan. In the absence of the government's intervention, with funds to ensure that uh, the the workers continue to work, even though it is on reduced week, uh, would not have occurred no, had it not had it not but been. But the hotel is in a stalemate. It hasn't. No, the sale has not is, gone. That is utterly untrue. The the we are at the tail end of the sale. In fact, the uh, the principal portion of the sale has been complete. What is now being negotiated is the, is airlift and marketing and having discussions with those operators. And we expect that that will be wrapped up And shortly. some of your critics say yeah. that you had a deal on the table that was left by the previous administration. You gave up that and had to go back and get renegotiation done, and you're now in a worse state. No, I think you're making a more compelling argument than they have, because they certainly couldn't support I, that. I, I, and a number of businesses have been open. I think the tech hub is already bearing, bearing fruit. So we're seeing, we're seeing notwithstanding uh, the, the downturn that has been going on in Grand Bahama for a number of years, we, we believe we're on the right road headed in the right direction. We certainly have to pick up the, 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 the pace, and um, all stakeholders' hands must be on deck so we can do this jointly. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Nation Building. As you can see, we've gone completely out of time. Thanks again, Minister, for coming uh, it's, and It's been an honor, and I look forward to coming back. I want to discuss what we're doing in youth development. Uh, we, that, that division we, is doing an we, incredible we'll, job. We'll be happy to have you back, sir. On behalf of all of us here at Nation Building, thank you so much for watching this broadcast, and stay tuned for next edition right here on Nation Building, and have a great week, as always.